Welcome to another Flare Court Media Whatever Wednesday. I'm Jason, and today's video is a little different. I'm stealing a video from a new channel that I just started. It's my personal channel, Jason O. Flaherty. You can find it on YouTube. I'm stealing this video instead of posting it there because I want you to see what this video is like. So it's a vlog channel over there, and it's just me kind of showing you things that I find interesting. It's much less highly edited than what I do on Flutter Court Media. Flutter Court Media, I try to put a lot of effort in to make everything look as good as possible. On my personal channel, it's me trying to just open up a bit more, show you some of the things that I love to do, explain some things, be myself. And so I wanted you to get a taste of what one of these episodes is going to be like, because I just started it. This would have been episode number two. Um, but anyway, this one is all about kayaking. So if you have ever wanted to learn how to get into kayaking, this is the video for you. If you want to just see a little bit more about me, it's also a good video for you. Uh, check it out. And then if you want to continue to see more vlogs, I have a link in the video description down below where you can go find my vlog site at my personal YouTube channel. Added the dog for extra effect. Howdy neighbor. I'm Jason. Welcome to my vlog. Right now you're probably thinking, this is kind of weird. If I've seen Jason on Flare Court Media, he was never this weird, except for that one time I did a April Fool's Day gag. But truth of the matter is, I think I'm actually kind of funny. But for some reason, when I put a camera in front of my face, I get serious as Stanley on The Office. So these vlogs are one, a chance for me to share some of my life with you, but two, a chance for me to try to relax and hopefully bring out some, some humor. Because while my humor is pretty self-deprecating, people seem to find it funny in person, so let's try and bring some of that out. I promise these vlogs are not going to just be this. <laughs> Each vlog, hopefully, will have a purpose. And this one is going to be me showing you the wonderful world of kayaks because I love kayaking and I want to share it with you. So the reason I'm telling you about kayaks today is because they're really fun, but they can be a little intimidating to get started because, I mean, you're buying something that's, you know, 10 feet long. What do you do with it? Where do you take it? What do you need? I'll tell you. So these two models here can best be described as the model of cheap. <laughs> if they're this lovely green color, that usually means they're the least expensive in the store. However, I've had this one for four years, going on four years now, this one two years, and they seem to be working just fine. You'll notice they are different shaped. So this is the less common one. It's a sit on top kayak. So that means that, well, you're gonna get wet if you sit on it, because there are holes that go straight through into the water. Now you can put stuff in here, and this is more or less watertight. It's great for packing tents and gear and stuff like that. Whereas this one is a more traditional style, so sit in kayak. It gives you foot mounts and you can tuck stuff up in there. And then there's, it's open all the way, but you can also put things in there. But it's gonna keep you dry, whereas this one is gonna keep you wet. Unless you buy something like these which are scupper plugs. So you can buy a scupper plug and plug all of your holes and it's going to keep water from coming up, but water can still obviously splash over. Out of all of my friends and my wife, I'm the only one with the sit on top kayak, but I actually love it. I think I get better speed from it and I just like getting wet. It's hot, it's 90 degrees some days when you're out there, 100. These, you're not going to get wet hardly at all. Maybe a little splash from the paddles, but you know, I just put on some swim trunks and off I go. Now, generally kayaks come with a paddle. Well, these cheap ones do. They come with one paddle. These ones came with this one and this, you might see a difference here. Black one came with the sit on top pad, kayak and the white one came with the sit in. Big difference is this right here. And this is designed as you bring it through the water and out to catch the drips and have it run off so it doesn't run into your kayak. Mine didn't come with one because you, you're getting wet. That's the whole point. <laughs> but I believe the more expensive the kayak, 
the less likely you are to get a paddle with it. So you're going to have to buy a separate paddle. So how do you get that big kayak on your car if you don't have cargo bars or kayak mounts? Well, obviously you can buy cargo bars and kayak mounts, but if you don't have any of that or don't want to do it, you can run to your local store and pick up something like this, a kayak mount. Do not take your kayak and stick it through the back door and have it hanging out both sides like that video that's going on around on the internet right now. Don't. <laughs> this costs $25 or something. It's two foam pads and you put this on top of your car. It cushions your paint job. You put the kayak here, you use the included ropes to either tie it underneath your windows or through your doors or through hooks around your car. Get yourself one of these. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Otherwise, you can, if you have this, which I did, I just went and bought some cheap bars from Amazon and some of these, and uh, you can just mount your kayak right there. Now you might notice this is bendable. You see how these fold down? I thought I'd save on gas mileage by putting them down, plus I don't have this tall thing all the time. Yeah, it's nice not to have the tall thing, but gas mileage, I don't think it's any better than anything else. I usually lose about three miles per gallon during the summer when I have these on. But I get to go kayaking with them on. So generally you get some straps like this. They're a single clip and the strap just goes through that. And you see on these, there's a little hook right there. The point of that hook is will hold the strap while you're busy loading your kayak. So you come up here, you do that. And you set this off to the side and you do it on the other one. And then when you put your kayak here, then you can grab these and bring it over the top. So I took those straps and took the loose end and then you just wrap it underneath the end of your cargo bar and then just clip it into here. Grow a third arm so you can do this while you record. And then just grab and pull until it's snug. What? I didn't have a head strap. All right, let me give it a shake to make sure nothing's going to go anywhere. And that's locked on. So let's go over some things that you might want to bring for accessories. First off, some gloves. These are simple weightlifting gloves. I don't normally use these unless I want to be kayaking for a really long time, but they will help you stop you from getting blisters. Next thing is some water shoes. This will let you climb in the water and climb in your kayak without your shoes falling off or getting wet because they're water shoes. I don't like sandals because they fall off sometimes. I lost a sandal because I had was in shallow water, had to put my foot out to push, sandal got stuck in the mud, sandal never came back up. <laughs> water shoes. Another thing is a waterproof case for your phone. This one's, I'm not sure I trust this one anymore because it's going on three years now, but uh, these are super cheap, super nice. And they come with a little neck strap so you have access to it right here, or you can lash it off to some bungees. Speaking of bungees, bungees, just get yourself a pack of random sized bungees and um, they come in handy because I'll show you. So see, I have jury rigged some paraline here and so I can unclip this. And now I can clip on like a speaker or a water bottle or something. If my kayak tips over, things don't all go floating away. Same thing back here. This came, but lots of times I will clip another bungee onto this and then put like a cooler back here or something like that. But as I said, my very first time kayaking is the only time that kayak fell over, tipped over, because I was trying to get in to swim. Anyway, everything went floating away. So lash everything to your kayak, make sure it's waterproof, make sure it is uh, floatable or tied to your kayak. Lastly, you need a life vest. So this is a kayak specific life vest. And the reason it's kayak specific is because the back is really thin and it goes higher up when you sit in there. That way when you're leaning back against the chair, 
you're not leaning against the super big puffy back. I made the mistake of buying a jet ski, one of these, and it did not have this mesh or this flexibility. I think a wasp just flew up my armpit. Last but not least, either a cooler with your favorite uh, soda or frosty beverage or a water bottle. And this one has, again, a little clip that I can clip it onto my kayak. Sunscreen, sunglasses, and a towel. Okay, so we're at the lake, but where do you put your kayak in the water at? Well, any lake that you really care to kayak in is going to have some kind of a boat landing or something where people can bring fishing boats or kayaks. So this location where I'm at right here, you see it actually has a dock. You can use the dock. It's not just for motor boats, though if you use the concrete pad, don't take very long because you might make some people angry as they're trying to unload their big motor boats. But uh, oftentimes you can set it up right here on the grass here and then when it's ready, just drag it over and slide in. Or you can see there's a sandy beach here that's perfect for sliding your kayak in. You can just put your kayak right there, get everything situated and then shove off. Also, you want to look for any signs that say, you know, prohibited due to blue algae or something like that where those are the one places you cannot kayak. Uh, lots of times you were state will have a website that posts all that information about the local lakes i think tells you if you're allowed to kayak in something but if it's a state or national lake you don't have to actually have any kind of a license to be in the water maybe your state does but nebraska sure doesn't uh, it's public water the only thing you need maybe is a permit to get into the parking area or into the park so just one last double check here make sure you got everything before you take off paddle water bottle because I'm actually going to try to get a workout. Music, phone, you might be noticing I'm missing a life jacket. That's because I let a friend borrow it and I forgot to pick it up when I picked up my kayak. So I don't have a life jacket but I know how to swim. There's no motor boats. I'm, I'm a good kayaker. I should be all right. But if you're any place where you might possibly ever get in trouble Wear, wear a life jacket or at least bring one on your kayak. Do as I say, not as I do. See if you have a sit-in kayak, then you'd probably want to go to the dock where you can just step into your kayak without getting your feet all wet. But since I'm going to get wet anyway, I usually just slide right in. So here you can see what I mean by a sit-on-top kayak. That's literally the lake <laughs> right down in there and uh, there's you know water there and I mean there's holes all over the place and I think even by my butt so if water gets in it leaks back out because it's designed to have fun in the sun let's talk about lake etiquette real fast now this lake is not designed for motorsports it's a small lake so there's no jet skis there's no you know, fun rafting motorboats, there's no pontoons. There might be a couple motor powered fishing boats, but there's signs that say you cannot leave a wake and leaving a wake is where you're moving so fast that there's turbulence behind you. So this is a slow lake. So the whole thing is pretty much safe and open for kayakers. However, on bigger lakes, oftentimes you'll see, you see a buoy out there Usually the buoys are closer to shore and the buoys will say no wake zone. And so if you're inside between that buoy and the shore, you cannot move your boat, the motor boats fast enough to create a wake. So that's a safe spot for kayakers. Now it doesn't mean you can't go across the middle of the lake, but just be careful. Keep your eyes out for motor boats and jet skis because well, I've never had an issue with anyone coming close to me. They usually see me. There is a chance, especially if you're not in a cheap green, <laughs> bright kayak, they might not see you. So if someone's coming your way, try to dodge them with your path, raise the thing. Yelling, probably not gonna be able to hear it because they have a huge motor going on, but just be wary. If you're within that no wake zone, you should be fine. If you're venturing into the middle part of the big lakes, 
keep your eyes out. Keep your eyes open. Keep a lookout, keep your eyes open. I know what you're thinking. If this whole lake is no wake, then what is this doing here if not marking the no wake zone? Well, sometimes they guard rocks. Not often though, especially on this because you should be moving slow enough that you're not gonna crash. But second, this is actually for the sailboat races. So there's two of them. So this is the Lincoln Sailboat Club. Every Thursday in the summer, they come out here and do time trials around these buoys. It's pretty fun to come and see. So I'm out on the lake. I normally don't listen to music. I like audiobooks. Uh, so I have Harry Potter playing, which probably hopefully won't hit a content match on YouTube. So I can play it and give you a sample of the audio quality here. Be sort of obvious once he performed a quick head count. It's not bad. Again, people are people are here to enjoy nature, so keep it quiet enough for just you. But this is waterproof and it floats. Fourteen of us won't be flying. There will be seven These things are super cheap. You can find them at Best Buy. I have a link in the video description where you can buy one. Audio quality not amazing, but where else can you do this? <laughs> <laughs> what other? There was no need for him to say another word. <laughs> Speaker, can you do that with? Probably a lot, but shush. I want to specify that all of that crap I said, water shoes and bungee cords and whatever, you don't need any of that to start. When I started, I had my kayak, my paddle, and a life vest, and the thing, that pad to put on my car. That was it. I used that for a long time, and I just slowly added the bits and pieces as I went on more kayaking adventures. So just get out and get started. It's so much fun. You can see behind me that someone is learning to fish and so therefore they can eat for life and my tip to teach you is when you're going past a fisherman try to give him as wide a berth as possible one because the fishing line is hard to see and you could hit it and two you're going to scare the fish away and no one likes to see a scared fish because then they don't go to school and then they're truant and then they don't show up and they get a bad job and next thing you know, they are working in a tuna factory, which is where the tuna go to make cars and automotives so that no one buys because they're made by fish. This is the part where I look back and see that the fishermen are gone because I took so long trying to come up with some sort of a joke on camera that <laughs> my example has disappeared. But they were there, I swear. Ramming speed. Last thing before we put back on the car is kayaks have plugs. Some of them might be screw. This one's just a little pop top. Open that up and then tilt the whole kayak up and any water that's gone inside it will drain out before you put it up. Well, I know that wasn't quite as funny as I wanted, but <laughs> I decided I wanted to actually teach people how to do this fun hobby. So if you have any questions, need help getting started, leave a comment in the video description down below and I will try not to fall <laughs> in the water. I'll try to answer them and help you get started because it's a great hobby. Anyway, see you next time.